Christian greetings, this is Pastor Peter Guy here again. I'd like to speak to you a little bit about the big picture of Pentecost, which will shortly be celebrated in Christian churches all around the world. You can read the account of Pentecost for yourselves in Acts chapter 2. What's happening at Pentecost? Well, most Christians agree that Pentecost is the birth of the Christian church, the outreach of the Christian church. Pentecost is the coming of the Holy Spirit for the purpose of world evangelism, and it's all a lot of power and excitement there. Well, if we read in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says that those disciples were all together in one place when there was the sound of a rushing mighty wind, not coming from outside, but actually in the building where they were all gathered together. And there appeared to be tongues of fire, which came to rest upon the apostles' heads. And those people began to speak in other languages in the hearing of all the visitors who were there at that occasion. Well, Jerusalem was a real melting pot at that time. Many local Jews were there in Jerusalem, as, many, as well as many Jews from other countries. They'd all come together to celebrate the Jewish festival of Pentecost. And all of a sudden, these disciples of Jesus started speaking about Jesus in languages that these foreigners could understand. What a wonderful opportunity for world evangelism. These foreigners were hearing about Jesus Christ in their own native tongues. So when they went back home, they could tell their own people about Jesus Christ. It was all about pre-evangelism, getting the stage ready for Later on, when Paul and the other apostles would travel to these places and establish churches for Jesus Christ in these places. Well, what's happening there on the day of Pentecost? Peter, as the spokesman for these disciples, gets up and he tells the people that this Messiah that your ancestors have been waiting for, this deliverer, this saviour, long promised by God, this king in the line of King David, this deliverer was actually Jesus Christ. He was the one that God had sent into the world. And you grabbed him. You nailed him to a cross simply because you missed him. You didn't agree with him. He didn't fit your description of what the Messiah should be. So you got rid of him. But that was according to God's plan. Because God condemned Jesus Christ for the sins of the world. And he raised Jesus Christ to life again three days later as evidence of God's seal of approval on what Jesus had accomplished. And Peter started to talk about things from the Old Testament and the penny started to drop for these people on that day. And they said in Acts chapter 2 verse 37, oh, Brothers, what shall we do? We didn't realize it. We waited for the Messiah to come. He finally comes. What do we do? We nailed him to a cross. We screamed out for him to be crucified. What's God going to do to us? Peter brings some comforting words to these people. He says in Acts 2 verse 38, Repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far away. Well, repent. These people certainly repented. Brothers, what shall we do? But they were cut to the heart to realize what had actually taken place. Repent. There certainly was a lot of repentance. What next? Be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be baptized? What happens in baptism? What's so important about baptism? Well, Peter highlights that in baptism, you'll receive the forgiveness of your sins, forgiveness from God, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. God's Holy Spirit will also be poured out upon you, just as he was poured out upon those apostles with great power on that day. Can that happen in baptism? Well, this is God's promise, Peter says, to you, to your children, to all people near and far, because God so loves the world that he gave his son to be this saviour. God gave the gift of baptism to bring the saving benefits of baptism. God gives his Holy Spirit through baptism. The Holy Spirit does what? The Holy Spirit brings saving faith. Can you have faith and not the Holy Spirit? Can you have the Holy Spirit and not faith? 
Paul says in 1 Corinthians, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Obviously, the Holy Spirit brings a saving relationship with Jesus Christ and with God the Father. That's the Holy Spirit's task, to bring us into relationship, a saving relationship with God. Yes, that's what happens at baptism, friends. This promise is to you, to those people present there at the day of Pentecost, to their children, to all people far away, even when they went back home to their own countries, the promise of God's forgiveness, God's grace, God's Holy Spirit would be with them in baptism. What a tremendous thing. How can God do that? Can baptism do that? The application of a bit of water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, it's a gift of God. It's a promise of God. What do we do? Nothing. We're passive in that whole thing, aren't we? Repent? Well, if we had to repent to have eternal life, well, that's a good work. And Paul says, by grace you have been saved, not by works. This is the gift of God. Yes, salvation is God's gift. When Jewish boys were eight days of age, they were circumcised. Circumcision for them meant being brought in to the covenant relationship that God had established with the people of Israel through Abraham. What did an eight-day-old baby boy understand about circumcision? Nothing. And yet this was God's gift. This was God's promise. This was God's act of adoption into his chosen people, Israel. A young child is baptized. What do they understand about baptism, about God himself, the salvation available in Jesus Christ? Nothing. And yet, does that nullify the gift of God? No, not at all. By faith, by the grace of God, rather, you have been saved. And that's God's gift of faith through his Holy Spirit. It's a promise of God to you, to your children, to all who are far away. If ever you've given someone a gift, you look expectantly at that person as they unwrap that gift to see the joy on their face when they discover what's inside that wrapped parcel. What do you do with a gift? Well, if you've received a gift, you can appreciate it, you can use it, you can do many things with a gift. You can also take a gift and put it on the shelf unopened and forget about it. But that gift is yours. You can receive a gift of money put into your bank account. But if you never access that bank account, if you never draw on that money, it's there, but it's of no value to you whatsoever. The Holy Spirit is God's gift to you in baptism. If you've been baptized, you have received forgiveness. What does forgiveness bring? Peace. You have peace with God because your sins are forgiven. Isn't that incredible? You have security with God. You have a saving relationship with God. You know that if you are forgiven by God, nothing can keep you out of heaven. In fact, you've been adopted into the family of God. That is God's gift to you in baptism. That's what God's gift is on the day of Pentecost, the gift of saving faith in Jesus Christ. That's God's grace. Yes, the day of Pentecost is many things. It is also a day to celebrate the saving grace of God. On the day of Pentecost, God takes a step in his amazing journey of intimacy. At the beginning, God was the creator of Adam and Eve and all things. God walked with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. They had an intimate relationship with their creator God that we can only begin to imagine. But Adam and Eve sinned. They disobeyed God. They, in effect, pushed God away. They broke that relationship that God had with them. Well, God stepped into his creation in the person of Jesus Christ to be the saviour of all people. God took another step of intimacy with his creation. Jesus came to be the saviour of the world. He died upon a cross for the sins of the world. And he rose victorious to guarantee eternal life to all who have a faith in Jesus Christ. Well, that faith was there in Jesus Christ. As all people battle the devil, the world, and their own sinful nature, Jesus always remained out there. But on the day of Pentecost, God took, took an even greater step of intimacy. He jumped from being out there, 
the Creator who stepped into creation to be one with us. The Holy Spirit dwells in our hearts to bring us this saving relationship with God. Why? Because God so loves us so very, very much. That's God's grace. That's God's mercy to all people. We can't begin to imagine the incredible love that God has for all people, that he took this step to actually jump inside our own bodies. Repent, be baptized. You'll receive this gift of the Holy Spirit to indwell you, to guarantee you of God's salvation. If you have been baptized, you have been saved. What now? What do you do with this gift of salvation? Paul says, be filled with the Spirit. It's an ongoing process to allow the Holy Spirit more access in your life. Yes, there is a response to the gift that we have received. You don't just receive this gift of God and put it on the shelf. No, we are to walk in the fruits of the Spirit. We're to exercise the gifts of the Spirit. We're not to quench or put down the Holy Spirit, but to allow him to well up in us and to guide and direct us each and every day. Friends, the, the day of Pentecost is all about God's saving grace, his remarkable gift of salvation. It's about God's journey of intimacy. It's about his love, his mercy, his grace for all people. Why? Because that's the incredible love of God for all people. If you have been baptized, you have received the Holy Spirit. If you've heard the word of God, you have also heard the Holy Spirit at work in you. Paul says in Galatians, did you receive the Spirit by good deeds or by hearing with faith? Faith comes from what is heard. What is heard is the preaching of Christ, Paul says in Romans. So the Holy Spirit comes to us through the word of God, through the Bible. When we open the Bible, God is speaking to us. God's Holy Spirit is bringing faith to us, working that faith in our hearts. And we can also receive this gift of faith in baptism. The important things, friends, if you have received this gift of God, what are you doing with it? How are you responding to God's incredible love for you? Let us take that gift of salvation, celebrate it. Celebrate the victory of Jesus, which is your victory, and walk in faith to the praise and glory of Jesus Christ every day. Thank you. God bless you.